Hello all. So I came up with another video part eight. And in this video, I will be sharing uh, how we can start with static analysis of any of the Android application or APK file. And uh, in this, I will be sharing uh, like I will be explaining the components which is using in Android manifest file as this file is important for any of the Android APK, which is uh, required at the time of uh, any of the Android AP, uh, application which is running in that uh, device. So uh, which which include all the parameters like the permissions, like the content providers. If if there is any intent is uh, working be between two activities, I'll tell you each and everything. So let's get started. So uh, for Android manifest file, uh, First of all, the extension, the extension would be XML and you will get uh, like basic information about the application like the SDK version, which is uh, which that APK is using at that time, the permissions which are required from the hardware component of your device or uh, like at the time of uh, runtime, if any of the application is required for any of the permission, then uh, this file will have all the permissions and all the parameters required. Uh, the next is activities. If you want to switch from one UI to another UI, then uh, this uh, changing from one activity or UI from another is called the activities. Okay, so next permission. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any extension, but uh, it defines what data and hardware component can be needed at the time of runtime. For an example, camera, for an example, internet, access your external storage or your internal storage, uh, Bluetooth and many other things. For an example, uh, if we talk about camera, so when you open any of the payment application and you want to scan your QR code, so in that in that process, your camera must be needed in order to uh, scan that QR code and uh, send to uh, the next activity, which is your uh, like pin number or where you, you put the amount which you want to pay for any of the shopkeeper. Same thing, internet. So uh, if we talk about Bluetooth, so let's say uh, you want to connect your uh, earbud or any of the headphones or earphones, uh, so and forth. So, so if you want to connect your uh, earbud, your headphones or your um, uh, neck bands, whatever, your uh, smartwatch, so you need to connect your, uh, uh, your external device with your mobile phone with Bluetooth device. And for that, the application is itself using your Bluetooth in order to uh, scan and in order to uh, search for the external Bluetooth device in order to connect with, with the same. So uh, for that, uh, the application must have uh, the permission to access your Bluetooth uh, device or the hardware. Next, uh, coming to the activities. Activities also doesn't have any extension too, but the ui element of any of the application or the different screen in the application which is uh, usually we call activities for an example i have already uh, tell like uh, when when you go to uh, any of when you when you go to complete your payment and to the shopkeeper then you have to follow uh, some of the ui's transition in, in in that complete process so for an example if you are using gpay or uh, google pay so uh, when you when the moment when you open the application the gpay logo will be showing and the second and uh, the second ui will be asking your uh, fingerprint which is again a hardware which is available in your device or your uh, android device and when you uh, when you uh, like um, scan your finger on that particular hardware it will authenticate you as a authenticate user and uh, it will throw to your second ui screen which is uh, what all your uh, past payment will you have done in in uh, in your uh, like complete history which which showing on uh, on that particular ui so the moment or the process of uh, the gpay logo uh, ui and the uh, the ui which shows all your payment is called the activities and and uh, like shifting of this is called the intent these intent or activities can be accessed uh, outside the application uh, so for that, there is a golden rule. We can say uh, if you see any uh, any activities having exported equals true this property, then you can able to use uh, those uh, activity outside the application. So this is a this is a uh, you know a, a note for uh, for you as a security researcher to take. Um, uh, to focus on this particular uh, property in order to um, like in order to 
report any of the vulnerability if that uh, if that activity is showing you some some hidden information which, which is not meant to for the public and uh, coming to the next slide and next if we if we talk about finding hard coded strings you will be uh, seeing all the strings required strings which is uh, required at that uh, at the time of uh, any of the application to use specific services or something so we can we can find in uh, resources slash strings.xml and most of the uh, files which like uh, which available in that resources folder can you can uh, go through with that if you find if you want to find some uh, juicy stuff over there and if we if we talk about the threat vectors, threat vectors are nothing but uh, the idea behind or the uh, methodology or the point where you can check uh, if if there is any vulnerability exists or not. So we can check for the login bypass. We can check for the any any URL exposed, uh, any API key exposed. We can also check for the Firebase URL also. So uh, before jumping into the uh, practical implementation let me uh, tell you about the application which i am taking so i have take injured android apk which is again a vulnerable application which which uh, the motto of uh, this application is to create a ctf type application where you can perform each and every type of vulnerability so uh, for to start with a static analysis and to start with very first file that is android manifest so I'll take this application and import in the JDX UI. So if you want to install JDX UI in your Windows machine, then I'll mention the link in the description. So you can go with that video and uh, see how you can uh, proceed for the same. So coming back to our uh, video, I have already imported that injured EPK uh, file. To start with static analysis, uh, we will go to the uh, package name of that particular Android app. APK, which is bnac.injured Android. And here you can see uh, the file Android manifest. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here uh, you won't be able to get the file. It is in uh, resources folder. And if you can see here uh, that this is the Android manifest.xml file. So uh, to start with uh, permissions. So at the top of any, any of the Android manifest file, you will be seeing uh, all the permissions which is required uh, at the time of any of the APK, uh, like to, to start or to run in, in any of the Android device. So here for this application, here you can see all the permissions are required, like access network state, internet, uh, the application is able to write in the external storage. Uh, it is also read phone state, external storage also. Apart from that, uh, you will be seeing all the SDK version, which is uh, required the minimum and the maximum. So if you can see here, the minimum SDK version is 21 and the target SDK version is 29. Here you can see all, all the uh, related information. Now, now coming back to uh, the activities. So if, if you want to see any of the activities, then uh, this will be start as an activity in, in the uh, uh, like anchor bracket. And you will be seeing all the information regarding your activities, like which activity is running and at at uh, at, uh, at what step. So coming uh, next, if you want to see if any of the an uh, activity is uh, accessible outside the application, for that we have to uh, search for uh, export true. Then how you can go? Just click on that uh, search icon and it will start searching for uh, loading for your Android file or com complete file structure in, in this uh, text area. Then you will be search for uh, exported. And here you can see all the files which having that exported word, but we have to search for true. No, uh, exported true. No, okay. Mm. Okay, let's try with. Android. Exported, no. Mm. 
no okay search for particular file exported okay so we we got uh, the exported true and see check here uh, this exported true will be enabled or set to true in this particular uh, activity and if we go uh, if we go forward you will be seeing all the themes and the labels and and uh, the uh, provider or the authority name for particular um, for particular activity so if we go down and if we see exported equals so you will be seeing uh i think okay so for this uh for this activity uh this activity will be accessible outside the application here same with uh if we go to this activity again no action bar and uh this this again activity will be accessible outside the application um let me check for another activities okay i think yes so uh for this activity here you you will be seeing like uh, the name of that particular uh, uh activity which is b25 uh, l activity and uh, it is again set to true that means if you if you want to access this particular activity from outside the application in in any of the android device then you will be able to uh, access this particular activity that means uh, that particular ui will be accessible outside your uh, uh, phone device or outside your android environment so that if if any of the information will be available in that particular ui you will be able to see that and apart from that if you want to see uh, uh parameters like backup no uh if you want to see um mm, okay so if you want to find any of the uh, let's say firebase url or something then you can search for uh, let's say firebase then you will be seeing all these activities and uh, many other things so if you search for let's say firebase database okay so we got uh, another service so uh, you can see here uh, all the url will be provided for the particular uh, service for example like firebase auth register and database register so here you can see uh, all the all the required um, like services which is available in that particular android manifest.xml file for any of the apk whenever you import in your uh, jdx ui or uh, extract from the apk tools so ported or accessible outside the application by searching for the exported uh, term and uh, see if you if you got any of the uh, extra information which is not meant uh, at, at that particular time or which is not meant to be built for the public use only okay so next if you want to find any hard coded string which is available in your uh, uh, let's say apk or any of the apk which you are going to uh, perform as a target then uh, what you can do is if you see any of the resource uh, dot ars sc folder then you will see uh, the folder called res folder and if you want to uh, let's say go in uh, string dot xml then if uh, for that this is the file and if you go through with uh, this particular file you will be able to see uh, let's say aws id which is again a hard coded id available in in that particular uh, uh, string.xml file and next if we if we check uh, like aws secret and uh, let's say uh, if you want to see any of the other uh, string again uh, we got a string called uh, this uh, encoded string which is again uh, something like flag 3 okay that string is uh, nothing but it is related to the uh, ctf level 3 which is uh, which is a concept of this vulnerable application and if we go uh, down then we can see okay there again uh, we got a string called firebase database url and this is the database url that that is uh, using in that particular application and uh, 
if we go down here you can see all the google api and app id which is again uh, hard codedly available in, in that particular string so this is how you can go in each of these uh, uh, directory where you can where you may be find uh, may be able to find uh, any of the hard coded string available uh, in that particular build of uh, apk which you are going to use as a target Okay, so this is it for today and uh, see you on the next chapter of the series. I hope you learn something new in this series as from today, I'll start the practical implementation of how you can uh, proceed with the static analysis and how you can proceed with the dynamic analysis. So keep watching. Bye-bye.